Hello and welcome to Doc Play's chemistry lesson. Today we topic is amount of substance and in particular we're going to be looking at gas volumes and the ideal gas equation. So by the end of today's lesson you should be able to do three of the following things. That is calculate gas volumes from equations, recall the ideal gas equation and use the ideal gas law in a given reaction. So straight away we'll go and look at gas volumes. Now then, the, the volume of a gas depends on the temperature, pressure and number of moles. Importantly, it doesn't matter what molecule it is. And that's simply on the uh, fact that a gas is so far apart compared to the size of the molecule that it really doesn't matter what molecule you've got. The volume is going to be independent of the molecule. So it only depends on those things, that's the temperature, pressure, and number of moles. And what that means is that if we have the same conditions of temperature and pressure of a gas and the same number of moles, then we can work out the moles given an equation. So we'll look at this example here. It says we've got one decimeter cubed of a gas, but one in an alkene with four carbons, one decimeter cubed. We have 10 decimeters cubed of oxygen. What volume of oxygen remains at the end? So our equation tells us that we have one mole of but one in would react with six moles of oxygen to produce four moles of CO2 and four moles of water. So we could we equally look at this in decimeters cubed. If I had one decimeter cubed of but one in, I would react with six decimeters cubed of oxygen and make four decimeters cubed of CO2 and four decimeters cubed if it was a gas, so if it was about 100 degrees of water. Well, that means if I started off with 10 decimeters cubed of oxygen and reacted it with 1 decimeter cubed of butene, I would end up using 6 decimeters cubed of the oxygen and I'd be left with 4 decimeters cubed of oxygen. Interestingly, I would have made four decimeters cubed of CO2 and I'd end up with a total of eight decimeters cubed of gas left over at the end. So as long as we've got the same pressure and temperature, then we can use volume straight away as we would normally with mole. And gas volumes is as simple as that. We'll look at plenty of examples in class and then we'll move on to the slightly more complicated ideal gas in class. So we look at this thing, the ideal gas equation, and what that assumes is that we have a gas that is inside some sort of container, a bit like this, and that there is no interaction between our gas particles and that they will rebound off the edges of our container uh, perfectly. They were not going to stick to the insides or anything like that. And it looks at, it's a combination, in fact, of four laws. And as we can see in our little infographic on the side here, it's as simple as A, B, C, D. So it's a combination of Avogadro's law, Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Dalton's law, which looks at how the volume is related to the number of moles, how the pressure and volume are related, how the volume is related to the temperature and also how 
partial pressures are related to the total pressure. And for the ideal gas law, we end up with this important statement that we worry about in the AS course, where we have the pressure for a given gas multiplied by the volume is equal to the number of moles of that gas multiplied by a gas constant, which is R, multiplied by the temperature. Now, these have got some important units in chemistry that we look at. Pressure is always given in pascals, that's PA, and often we're given a unit of, say, 100 kilopascals in a question. What we have to make sure that we're happy with is that a kilopascal is equal to a 1,000 pascals, and therefore a 100 kilopascal would be equal to 100,000 pascals if we were going to use it in an equation. Our volume. Well, our volume is always given in meters cubed. And often we're given values of volume in centimeters cubed. So if we want to convert from, say, 100 centimetres cubed perhaps would be a typical value to metres cubed we would have to divide by 1 times 10 to the 6 or a million and so we would end up with a value of 100 times 10 to the minus 6 metres cubed of course that is the same as 1 times 10 to the minus 4 metres cubed in that instance our temperature is in the absolute Kelvin scale will normally be given values in degrees Celsius so the conversion of degrees Celsius into Kelvin is to add 273 to our temperature scale our moles is the same the gas constant we're not required to remember but if we're using these values to two decimal places is 8.31 or to 8.314 if we're going to be giving in uh, three decimal places and it's got units of joules per mole per Kelvin. So let's just have a look at Here's our question. It says, what volume of carbon dioxide gas measured at 800 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals is formed when one kilogram of propanone is burned in a good supply of oxygen? The thing we're not told here, and we, we know, is that the value for R is equal to 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin. So if we look at our question, we've got a value for the temperature, importantly in Kelvin, so we don't need to do a conversion. We've got pascals as a pressure, and we'll need to convert that from kilopascals to pascals. We've got a value for the gas constant. We haven't got a value for the moles, but we do have a mass, and we know we can calculate the MR, so we can work out the number of moles, and there we're going to have a value for the volume. So here we have to rearrange our equation. So we're going to have volume is equal to P and moles times by gas constant times by the temperature over the pressure, where T here is already equal to 800 Kelvin. Our pressure going to be equal to 100,000 pascals because we've multiplied by a thousand to go from kilopascals to pascals. R is equal to 8.31 as we've already said and the number of moles is going to be equal to the mass which is going to be a thousand grams divided by the MR here of propane which is C3H8 
So it's going to be 36 plus 8, so 1,000 over 44. And that will give us the moles of propane, but we're interested here, not in the moles of propane, but the moles of CO2. So the moles of CO2 is going to be three times larger than the moles of propane. So our final equation is going to be volume is equal to 1000 divided by 44 times by 3 multiplied by 8.31 multiplied by 800 Kelvin all divided by 100,000 so this bit here should be bracketed as well and that's going to give us a final answer here of about 4.51 meters cubed and if we can remember our conversion to centimetres cubed, if we were asking for it in centimetres cubed, that would be the same as 4.51 times 10 to the 6 centimetres cubed. And so we've got to be able to use that equation, perhaps instead of volume, we might be required for pressure, or we might be trying to work out temperature. And that comes to the end of our lesson on the ideal gas equation and volume equations. We'll have a quick recap now of what we've seen. So there we go. We've looked at amount of substance, gas volumes, and the ideal gas equation. You should now be able to calculate gas volumes from equations. Recall the ideal gas equation. PV equals NRT. Remember the specific units that we use for these. And then use the ideal gas law in a given reaction.